Now, Rodrigo, my first question for you is what has it been like watching Georgia just absolutely dominate this year? Uh, it's been awesome. Um, you know, while, while I was there, um, you know, we definitely had some, some really strong seasons um, in my last few years while I was there, but uh, it seems like they've kind of just taken it to another level this year. And it's been really fun uh, to watch them on some of the Saturdays that I have some, some open time where we're between meetings or travel or whatnot. It's been really fun to watch them just kind of tear it up this year. Are you in touch with uh, Kirby or JT Daniels at all? Do you still talk to members of the team? Uh, I do, but not uh, not so much JT or, or, or Coach Smart. Um, I kind of just, you know, let them do their thing. Um, but I have been in touch with some of the specialists uh, during the season. Um, Jack Podlesny, obviously the uh, fiddle kicker that's starting for them right now. You know, he's been doing a pretty solid job, and I've been in touch with him here and there. And uh, also Jake Camarda, um, who, you know, we had we had a couple years of overlap my last two years, we had first two years, and so we roomed together um, for, for two seasons. So, um, you know, we have a, a pretty strong – uh, relationship. And so I've just been uh, trying to keep in touch with those guys throughout the season and, you know, just, uh, just see how they're doing. And they're obviously doing really well right now. That's so great. What do you tell them? Or if they were to ask you for advice, um, you know, what would you say? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, you know, pod has, has asked me for a little bit of advice this season. Um, and, you know, I just tried to tell him like, you know, dude, there's a reason that you're the starting kicker for the university of Georgia. It's because you have the chops and, and you have what it takes. Um, to be able to play in the SEC, to play the, you know, be a kicker in the best conference in the country. Um, and so I just, you know, try and tell him that, you know, you can just remind yourself of that and just know that there's a reason you're in this position. It's because you're plenty good enough to do it. Um, you know, so just trust in yourself and just trust that, um, you know, God is, is going to, you know, show you the way and just show you what is meant for, you know, meant to happen uh, with you this season. I've often thought that kickers have, the hardest job in the NFL in college football. You guys do not get enough credit. People only get mad at you when you miss. Is confidence a huge part of it? Like to go out there and know that you are playing such an integral part and you have very small windows of time to make it happen. Is it just that you have to believe in yourself beyond any other, like no question, you can't have any moments of doubting it? Yeah, I mean, confidence is definitely uh, huge for specialists, for kickers, punters, and snappers. You know, um, our, our jobs are, you know, all very similar in relation to each other, but all very different um, in comparison to the other positions on the team. And we do have a very kind of unique position where every time we step out on the field, it's a pretty high pressure situation. Um, you know, even when the team is running out for a punt, you know, you need to make sure that you have a clean operation, a clean snap and a good punt to make sure that you give your defense good field position, uh, you know, when, when you turn the ball over to the other side. Um, so every time we step out on the field, it's definitely kind of a high pressure situation. And, you know, we always want to be able to perform uh, to the best of our abilities. And so confidence definitely does go a long way where, you know, we have to believe that when we step out on the field, we're the best guy for the job. Um, we're the best guy on the field and we're going to be able to execute at a high level. Um, you know, that's something that, you know, I think every specialist is constantly working on myself included, you know, there's, you're always trying to find ways that you can, um, you know, become more, I guess, mentally, uh, mentally tough and mentally focused to make sure that no matter what happens, you know, in your mind, you believe that you're the best and that your confidence is going to be unshakable when you go out there. You know, Rodrigo, if this whole football thing doesn't work out, you could be a motivational speaker. <laughs> hey, I would not mind that one bit. You know, I love, uh, I love football. I love the game. Um, you know, motivational speaking wouldn't be bad. I'd also would love to look into getting into coaching, um, broadcasting, you know, a lot of, a lot of different outlets um, that I could potentially go down later on. That's so great. Now, obviously this weekend is the Florida Georgia game. Mm -hmm. What is it like to play in that? And can you sort of walk me through the days leading up to it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's obviously one of the biggest games of the year. And a lot of times the winner of the game ends up being the SEC, SEC East champion and goes to Atlanta to play um, in the uh, conference championship game. So, you know, typically there are very high stakes whenever this game is played. Um, you know, it's it's usually always played around Halloween. Um, I think it might have been played on Halloween Day one time when uh, when I was there. Um, you know, so it's always kind of end of October. Everyone kind of loves the fall, loves getting ready for uh, Halloween and all that, but we usually always come off of a bye as well. Um, you know, so we, we have a bye weekend the week before. And so we almost kind of have two weeks of preparation and two weeks where you're, you're locked in on Florida. Um, during the bye week itself, practices, you're not necessarily, 
You know, it's not all dedicated to scouting for Florida. Usually the week before is focused on getting back to fundamentals where we kind of basically go back to square one and almost kind of do a reinstall of, of everything of our offense, defense, and special teams for that week, just to make sure that everyone is fundamentally sound. Everyone has a really good understanding of the scheme. Everyone can kind of brush up on the, their techniques and whatnot. Um, and so we use the week that by week uh, to really do that, really just hone in on our skills and hone in on what makes Georgia, Georgia. And then, you know, that, you know, obviously we have our minds on Florida knowing that, you know, they're our next opponent. And then, that week before um, is a standard game week. And, you know, everyone just kind of has a little bit of extra juice and a little bit of extra edge uh, knowing that we're going to go down to Jacksonville. What does Georgia, you know, you say what makes Georgia, Georgia, what does Georgia mean to you? Um, I mean, as far as what makes Georgia, Georgia, I guess, um, obviously, um, you know, dominating the line of scrimmage is, I think, one of the defining characteristics that they're showing this year. Um, obviously being able to run the ball very well and very efficiently um, with several running backs this year, um, Zamir, James Cook, Kenny McIntosh, you know, there's a lot of guys in that backfield that are doing really good things. Um, so being able to dominate on the offensive line and, and be able to consistently run the ball well. And then the defensive line obviously has a lot of big names. Um, Jordan Davis, you know, being the one that a lot of people know, but also guys like uh, uh, Trayvon Walker and, uh, Adam Anderson, you know, there's just a, a lot of a lot of guys, a lot of forces on the defensive line um, that are doing some really good things. And so being able to dominate the line of scrimmage, I think, is something that makes Georgia, Georgia, something that Coach Smart has harped on um, for a very long time. Um, just being able to know that if you can do well in the trenches, then you're going to do well in the ball game. Is there any funny story about Coach Smart, like a speech he gave where you were all like, what is going on? Um, um, I don't know about that. There's definitely some. Uh, some very passionate um, speeches that he gives um, post-practice, um, pre-game. You know, he, he is a, he's a very passionate coach and, and brings his all. He brings 110% to every single practice and every game. And that's something that I think, uh, you know, the players can respond to. And they really like that um, he has so much energy and passion every time he steps out on the field. Um, I guess maybe a funny story um, would be in uh, 2019, my senior season, uh, the first day that we had live field goal in preseason camp, um, you know, we were uh, the specialists were warming up on one field and then, you know, obviously the offense and defense is on another field. And so all the specialists run over um, to get ready for the live field goal period. And normally we start with a really short kick and back up, you know, so we'll start with an extra point and then we'll back up, you know, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, whatever it is. Uh, and that's kind of what my field goal script would look like. Um, but this first day of training camp or not the first day of training camp, but the first day that we had live field goal in training camp, we were maybe four or five days in, um, we're running in and we're, we're getting lined up, you know, to hit field goals. And he goes, no, I want the first one to be a 50 yarder. And so we backed up. And so, you know, he's got the microphone and all the loudspeakers are going. So everyone can hear on all the fields. He's like, Ron. I need you to hit a 50, like you got to hit a 50 first up because you never know you, the first kick you get could be a 50 yarder. And so, you know, of course I, I went in and made it and then we went back and did the rest of our script as per usual. Um, but then we got into the Vanderbilt game week one at Vandy. And I think I kicked three extra points in the first half, but then to open up the second half on our first drive, we stalled out and I had a 50 yard field goal attempt as my first attempt of the season. And I made it on the right hash and it was the same right hash that, you know, that we did in practice. And I was like, Hey, you know, there you go. I guess he was right. <laughs> that is amazing. Oh my yeah. God. And you made it in practice. Yeah, made it in practice and then went out and made it in the game to open up the season. That is amazing. I love that. Now, there's a picture of you that went viral a few years ago that's really incredible. Do you still keep in touch with Quavo from Migos? Um, not, I, I wish. Um, you know, <laughs> there there are some other former players that are a little more connected with him than I am. Um, I know that Richard LeCount, uh, has spends a good bit of time with them and, you know, they're, they're always posting him on their Instagram stories and he's posting them and, you know, back and forth. So I know he spends a good bit of time with them. Uh, I haven't spent a ton of time with them. Um, I, I talked to him for a few minutes before the Rose bowl. Um, I think that's the picture that you were referencing where we took a picture on the sidelines before the Rose bowl. Um, and then they came to the national championship game and then 
before the Notre Dame game in my senior season, uh, they came and they did a feature with, uh, with the college game day crew in our indoor facility before our Friday meetings. And so I took another picture with him then and, and talked to him for a few minutes there as well. Um, but haven't been in as consistent of contact with him as, you know, some of the other uh, former dogs uh, like Richard. So we got to we got to recreate that picture, man. It's too good. It's <laughs> yeah, too it's, good. It's, it's pretty sweet. He, he's a really cool dude. Um, you know, I'd love to hang out with him again sometime. But, you know, got to got to finish up the season. But I know he's uh, always rooting for the dogs and he is a huge fan. I know it's pretty cool to have, um, you know, some pretty high profile people like him that are supporting the team. Listen, we'll tag him in this and we'll be like, hang out with Rod. Rod wants to <laughs> Please, please hang out with Rod. <laughs> uh, I got two more questions. One, does Team Rex Specs get the respect it deserves? Um, I think we're, we're getting there. Um, you know, I think that you have to earn it every day. Um, that's kind of something that, you know, I've also been, um, you know, tagging a lot of my recent content with walk on mentality. And, um, you know, I, I think that is just kind of the mentality that, you know, if you want people to respect the specs, you have to have that mentality that you have to earn your spot every single day. Um, so you have to go out and give everything that you have and, you know, feel like you're owed nothing and feel like you deserve nothing and everything that you, that you get, you have to earn it. I mean, serious about the motivational speaker thing, man, you've got something <laughs> going. All right. My final question, why should I be a Georgia fan? Why should you be a Georgia fan? Oh man. I mean, I just feel like, Georgia's amazing. Um, you know, obviously, um, there is a lot of uh, history and there is a lot of tradition um, that coincides with their football program. Um, but I just feel like if you went to the University of Georgia, if you spent time in Athens, if you spent time on the campus, it's not hard to understand why people love it. I mean, it's a beautiful campus and um, the student body is amazing. The staff is amazing. Like every, everybody that you meet at the University of Georgia is, um, is just really wonderful. And you know, I just feel like you kind of just fall in love with the place and, and it's not really hard to do. So, I mean, I guess you should just love the University of Georgia because of the people. The people are amazing. And the dogs and Uga. Obviously. Yeah. Uga is the best. <laughs> All right, Rod. Can I get a go dogs from you? Absolutely. Go dogs. Thank you so much. You've been wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here, College Football on Fox.